Hello everyone. So, we will continue with the topic twist. What we are discussing is that the twist factor. Okay. So, twist factor we have discussed two different systems, one is in direct system, another is indirect system. Now, let us try to uh, solve some numericals, very simple numericals we will try to solve here. Now, this is a very simple problem. We have say four different types of yarns, four different yarns of different count, okay. so, 20s, 30s, 40s and 50s any cotton yarn have same twist per inch, same twist say 20, 20 twists have been given with the all these yarns. Okay. Now, the yarn having maximum fiber obliquity is which yarn will have maximum fiber obliquity? This is the question. Okay. Now, fiber obliquity means the theta, we are talking about the theta, and tan theta is proportional to the twist multiplier, and here if we can measure the twist multiplier of all these yarns and the yarn with maximum twist multiplier will have higher highest fiber obliquity. Okay. So, this is an uh, equation we know and we know the equation here twist per inch equal to twist multiplier multiplied by under root any. So, T m we can calculate by the formula T p i by under root n e. So, here T p i is given for all the yarn it is fixed it is a 20. So, we can calculate the twist multiplier for different yarn. So, twist multiplier for 20s yarn is 20 divided by under root 20 it is a 4.47 for 30s yarn it has become 3.65, 40s yarn it has become 3.16 and 50s become 2.82. So, that means the yarn coarser yarn if we impart same twist it will give us the higher twist multiplier. That means, the as the yarn diameter increases or yarn becomes coarser if we impart the same twist level the twist angle will be more. That means, in among these yarns this yarn of 20s count is hard yarn most and softest yarn is the 50, 50s count yarn, because it has got less least twist multiplier although amount of twist twist per unit length is same. So, the conclusion is the for the same twist level higher twist multiplier is for coarser yarn. Okay. So, this is we have seen. So, 20s any yarn has maximum twist angle. So, maximum fiber obliquity this is the answer. Now, next another problem here is the the direct twist factor of 35 any yarn is 36 T p c m dot takes to the power half. This is the direct twist factor the yarn count is 35 n m, but here the unit is given in terms of text. So, we have to convert this 35 n m to text and the thing is given what is the approximate twist in terms of twist per inch. Okay. Here it is given twist per centimeter it is asked the twist per inch. So, this is question part 1 and next is that if the diameter of the same yarn is 0.28 millimeter what will be the approximate twist angle. So, this is the two part the solution is that 
the data given the Ian Le Din linear density is 35 nm. So, let us convert it to text it has become. So, text is the relationship is 1000 by nm. So, 1000 by nm means 28.57 text text we have got and the twist factor is 36 is given here and the equation is that twist twist per centimeter equal to twist factor by under root any. So, we can calculate the twist per centimeter in the yarn. So, what is twist per centimeter? It has come out to be 36 to divided by under root 28.57, it has become 6.73 and that is the twist per centimeter and if we multiply it by 2.54, so it will be your twist per inch. So, it the answer is that first question is the the yarn is having twist of 17.1 twist per inch. Now, second problem is that if the diameter of the yarn is 0.28 mm, what will be the approximate twist angle? Now, the solution here is that the formula we know tan theta equal to pi d t here pi is d is known given to 0.28 millimeter and t is known that we have calculated earlier. So, diameter we have converted in terms of centimeter because it is a twist per centimeter was given. So, twist per centimeter we have got 6.73 twist per centimeter. So, tan theta we have we can calculate pi multiplied by diameter 0 0.028 multiplied by twist per unit length twist per centimeter. So, it is coming out to be 0 0.5832 and theta is tan inverse 0 0.5832 it is coming out to be 30.25 degree. So, that is the twist angle of the yarn. So, in this way we can solve different problem related to twist in the yarn. Okay. These are very simple and if we understand the concept of twist multiplier we can solve many problems okay. and this is very actually it is a practically it is used in industry. Okay. Now, another terms okay, other terms which is very widely used in industry and people normally get confused with this term. One has to be very careful in using these two terms and where do we use these terms? These terms are related to twist, but it is a twist contraction. Okay. As the yarn gets twisted like this is the fiber this is the strand and it is twistless and when it is twisted the length suppose it is a length L 0 this length will get contracted because of the inclined helix of the fiber. So, this is the L 1, so, L 0 is more than L 1 that is the contraction, this is the contraction and the knowledge of this twist contraction and retraction helps in maintaining the draft in the spinning process properly. So, we must know the amount of contraction at least rough idea which we must have, so that we can properly set the draft. Otherwise, if we set the draft suppose we want to have a yarn of say 30 takes. Okay. 30 takes say uh, from a roving of say 900 takes, 
we have a roving of 900 takes and we want to get 30 takes here. Now, in that case in the ring frame and drafting system we have set the draft 900 by 30. So, 30 draft we have saved. So, ultimately what will happen if we set 30 draft. So, the it is not the, the 30 takes which we are getting it is not the takes of the final yarn it is the takes of this strand which is coming out from the front roller nip. But finally, this has shortened to L 1 that means, it has contracted and the takes means the unit the constant for constant mass what is the length that means, the mass is constant the length if length is actually contracted that means, the takes value final takes value will be more than this value it will be somewhere higher than this takes value that is why we have actually done some wrong calculation and it will be say suppose 31 takes or something 31 32 takes somewhere higher than this and that is due to that we have not taken into consideration of contraction we do not have any knowledge of contraction. So, if we have a knowledge of contraction then we can actually set a draft of little bit more than this higher draft suppose we will draft more than this draft which is maybe say 31, 32 draft we will set and if we set the draft more than this the fiber takes the strand takes will not be 30 it will be less than 30 it will be say 29 or something takes. So, this takes if we get then after contraction it will come out to be close to 30 takes which is our target area. So, that is why the twist contraction is uh, concept is extremely important for the setting of draft. So, contraction factor there are two factors one is contraction factor the factor by which the draft is to be increased to maintain the yarn count due to twist contraction that is the and contraction factor the C y is expressed as the length of 0 twisted yarn divided by length of twisted yarn. So, that is why so 0 twisted yarn and length of twisted yarn and length of twisted yarn if it is there is no twist if there is no twist in the yarn. So, contraction factor will be it will be 1 and if there is a infinite to suppose it is a twist is such that it has the contracted contracted and contracted ultimately it has become 0 theoretically. So, the contraction factor will be infinite. So, the range of contraction factor is that it is a it is a from 1 to infinity. So, that is how we can measure. So, it is a it starts from 1 when there is no contraction okay. and the setting of draft in the ring frame is that the nominal draft in the ring frame is twist uh, twisted yarn count by roving count that is how we uh, set the nominal count and actual draft which we have to set it is basically it is more than that the because ultimately yarn count is we, are, we know that is a that is the count it is required. Okay. Here it is a indirect system indirect system roving takes by yarn takes. So, in that way the actual draft will be we have to multiply the nominal draft by the contraction factor. So, we must have knowledge of contraction factor, so that we can set the actual draft in the ring frame. Similarly, the retraction factor is that it represents the fractional decrease in length 
or increase in linear density of continuous filament yarn during twisting. So, this retraction factor is normally used in filament multi filament yarn. So, it is a fractional decrease. So, mean untwisted length by twisted length divided by twisted yarn length ok that is the retraction factor. So, the we must have some knowledge of contraction and retraction then we can actually set the draft proper draft or proper twist level we can set because retraction factor is important because if we know the twist if we know the traction factor then we can calculate the length of the uh, filament otherwise the filament length calculation will be wrong. So, that calculation is important here, but in uh, staple yarn it is the draft. So, the difference is that in staple yarn the length calculation is not done by the twist there it is done by the delivery rate, okay. but here it is a length which we have already produced the filament twisted and uh, be before twisting we know the filament length and if we know the retraction factor we can actually predict the what will be the actual length of twisted filament. Okay. Now, we will discuss the techniques of measurement of twist. Okay. There are different techniques available so, first is that direct counting method. Okay. This is the it is a simplest method where we actually we untwist the yarn. The method is to untwist the yarn whatever twist available in the present in the yarn and the to count how many turns are required to make it zero twisted. So, if we, we have to uh, keep on untwisting till it has become zero twisted. Okay. A suitable instrument has two jaws at a set distance. Okay. The distance is known and out of this two jaws one jaw is only laterally movable it does not rotate it moves to set the required test length and another jaw which rotates which rotates just to untwist the yarn up to the level of zero twist. Okay. So, a counter is attached to the rotating jaw just to count the number of turns <coughs> samples are conditioned in the standard testing atmosphere before starting the test. Now, this is the instrument where this is the movable jaw which moves laterally okay. and the scale is there <coughs> which determines the test length. Suppose we want to test at say 10 centimeter length or say few inch length okay, 10 inch gauge length. So, we we move this yeah, this jaw first what we have to do we have to fix the yarn end at the rotatable jaw that we are fixing then we set the the movable jaw the length test length we are setting after that we start the count this uh, untwisting by rotating the handle okay and where depending on the direction of twist we can use the counter for s twist and z twist and number of turns are counted it is a straight forward and where a standard dead weight is placed hang because to remove the the undue crimp in the yarn okay. to make the yarn straighten then the jaws are tightened and then start rotating. Now, the testing is started at least 1 meter from open end of the yarn that we have discussed during sampling we have to take the yarn at least 1 meter from the away from the end because 
at the end if we take that may give wrong result because of the torque present in the end those uh, at the end it will get untwisted. Standard tension it is a 0.5 centinewton per tex is used. So, when the yarn is being clamped in the instrument the twist is removed by turning the rotatable clamp until actually possible to insert the needle. Okay. Now, the yarn when it is twisted in the twisted yarn this is the twisted yarn and depending on the direction of twist if we un untwist this one ultimately the fibers will become twistless and will stop there and then we will have we will actually insert some pin and if the pin moves smoothly that is the point where we will stop and that we have to do by trial and error method and once the individual the pin moves then the non rotatable the twist is removed by turning the rotatable clamp until it is possible to insert a needle between the individual fibers. So, individual fiber between the individual fiber we have inserted the uh, needle at the non rotatable clamp. So, other side we have inserted and the traverse it across the rotatable clamp that we will try to traverse and if it moves smoothly then there will be it will be twistless in that then we can count the number of twist. So, we can use a magnifying glass okay, just to see the alignment of fiber it is for single yarn we need the multi the magnifying glass just to see the fiber, but for dub double yarn we do not need because we can simply pass the needle. Okay. Next is that continuous twist tester the principle is exactly same here, but the thing difference is that here the yarn directly from the package will be tested and it will be again after testing again it will be winding on the another package it is a continuous process, but it is we cannot say continuous it is intermittent process, but the strand of yarn is continuous. So, we do not take the cut yarn okay. the straightened fiber principle is also used here. So, we, uh, we use the same principle as we have used earlier the yarn pass from it is uh, it is passes from the same package through a guide through a non rotating jaw through a rotating jaw and finally, it is winding on a uh, package on a drum. So, this is the principle here this A is the it is a base okay. here it is a base of the instrument B is the peg on which we place the bobbin okay. C is the yarn package and this is the D is the guide yarn guide E is the actually E here E is the lens magnifying lens we can see the whether it is a fibers are parallel or not and here f is the fixed jaw this is the fixed jaw here. Here the thing is that that fixed jaw in earlier case we have seen the fixed jaw can move laterally, but here the fixed jaw is a fixed it does not move laterally it. So, this is a fixed jaw and the rotatable jaw this one it has it can move laterally and also it uh, rotates here. So, rotatable jaw is uh, that this is the G G is the rotatable jaw H is the counter it counts the number of turns H is the counter I is the handle we can just rotate the untwisting takes place J is the winding drum and K is the specimen this K length of k is actually adjusted by 
moving this the this uh, movable jaw ok. It is movable as well as rotatable jaw. Assuming that uh, 1 inch length k of the yarn is gripped between the jaw, the twist is taken out and the number of turns are noted. So, if we test 1 inch length, then simply by untwisting the directly the number of turns, we can get the twist per inch. The handle is then turned until the counter reading is again 0, okay. then and so after twisting then again we will have to bring it to 0 for the next test. The spring loaded spring loaded jaw of the rotating clamp, so the clamps are rot spring loaded are opened and clamp moved to the, the, the other clamp uh, this rotating clamp moved to the to forward to touch the fixed jaw. So, here the system is that this is actually it is moving here. So, that it is un, uh, earlier there was a testing was there then it is it is actually this clamp is moving towards the fixed jaw and with the it is when once it is touching that means there is no yarn that in that case then we clamp it at the rotatable joint and after clamping again we move to, uh, towards the right side. So, that the required distance is there in between these jaws and at during that time that this, this jaw f this jaw it is a loose. So, that yarn is unwound from this package c and the specified length k is when once it is reached then we stop this jaw the movable jaw then it is tightened the jaw is tightened spring loaded tightened and by that time once it is moving here the yarn is continuous yarn. So, this there will be slackening here that slackening we can manually wind again. Okay. So, after that winding that the, the specimen is ready for testing then we will start the unwinding and to measure the twist. So, the fixed jaw is then opened rotating jaw clamp the clamp rotating clamp is pulled back to the working position with pull uh, which pulls 1 inch new test sample and the drum is allowed to take up the slack yarn ok. Fixed clamp is again closed which is now uh, ready for the next test ok. So, in this way this continuous testing take place for so from one package we can test very quickly a number of tests ok. Next principle is it is called untwist twist method. So, untwist twist method or another term is it is called twist contraction method. So, this is the system where the knowledge of twist contraction is being used, because here the principle is that initially the yarn is twisted and it is assumed that yarn whatever length of yarn twisted length of yarn L t it is a less than that of the untwisted yarn. Now, once we untwist the yarn, the yarn becomes fibers becomes parallel, the yarn length is increased. So, L 0, 0 twisted length. Now, after this 0 twisted length it has become 0 twist then we will not stop here we will keep rotating the that jaw and the yarn will be twisted in other direction. So, suppose this was in this twist was in z direction here it is a 0 twisted no twist and here then it will be s direction. We will keep continuing the twist twisting till the initial length is reached. So, this was a higher length. So, initial length this length is same same length is this. 
So, this has become L t. So, what happened here the assumption is that the twist the during untwisting the length is increased and suppose you are, you are giving the twist t here. So, we are rotating it uh, to have so t turns we are rotating here and if we rotate the same turn t the yarn will contract again to the same extent that is the assumption here and uh, this is actually for most of the staple yarn this is this works basically because here the during uh, twisting in other direction it again gets contracted. Okay. So, that means what we are doing we are imparting the double the twist 2 t twist we are imparting 2 t turn we are imparting and then we can do calculation to get the twist. So, so if we know the length length say x length. So, for x length so this uh, this total turn we are uh, if we know and if we divide it by 2 that will give us the actual turns per unit length. Okay. So, here the system is that this is the pointer pointer with certain minimum load of tensioning and the pointer is in uh, the yarn length is selected in such a fashion that the this is the length here that the pointer it the yarn is pulled the pointer is being pulled by the yarn. So, that it comes to the 0 segment 0 position it is a 0 mark it has reached pointer is inclined and the yarn is under tension of that this dead weight some minimum load is there. Okay. Now, what happened if we start untwisting the yarn then the yarn gets extended then pointer will be vertical pointer will never come in other direction because the yarn is slack and this is the condition here and in between when the pointer is straight after that may be certain at certain point may not be immediately after certain point still if the twist is there the yarn will become slackened here. Then we will start we will continue rotating the this handle in the same direction and after that after zero twisting when the zero to here we will not be able to actually point out the zero twist condition, but we, if we continue after it crosses the zero twist condition then yarn will again start contracting. So, and we will continue rotating it till the pointer reached to the zero position which actually shows the initial length it has reached to the initial length L t as we have seen. So, this method is based on the assumption that with the increase in twist the yarn contracts in length when the twist is removed the length will reach to its original length. Okay. So, original 0 twisted length and when the yarn is again retwisted in the other direction that means, we will continue rotating in the other direction to the same extent the yarn will reach again to its initial contracted length that is the assumption and suitable for staple yarn. So, we normally do not use for filament yarn because filament yarn twist is a very simple measurement we can use the first method we can actually get the direct twist zero twist condition because here zero twist condition identification is very difficult okay. that is why we use this one. 
the yarn is kept under the say under a uh, same tension small it is a small uh, tension we measure and this tension is this tension is normally constant okay, for set of yarn and has a nominal length 10 inch 10 inch length we keep as the twist is removed the yarn extends and pointer assume vertical position and so removing tension is there eventually all twist is taken out, but the jaw is kept rotating in the same direction bringing the pointer back to its original 0 mark again and the total length of the yarn was 10 inch if we assume then the total number of turns recorded the bringing it to 0 mark if we divide it by 20 we will directly get twist per inch. So, that is a because we have to divide by 2 times of that m because it is a 2 multiplied by 10 because it is a rotated in 2 times. Now, there is a limitation here limitation is that it is this is not useful this system will we cannot use for all the staple yarn we can use for mainly for ring span yarn. And that too for only gray yarn not even we should not use for say scoured or processed yarn, bleached yarn and only ring span yarn is it gives a correct result very close result accurate result it gives. But if we try to use other yarn say rotor span yarn, rotor span yarn main problem is that it has got typical structure with the fiber wrapper fiber. As it has got wrapper fiber the untwisting untwisting is a problem. If we it does not get untwisted and once it is not getting untwisted, so we cannot it cannot actually extend it, it does not extend or even the that the zero twist condition it is not possible. So, effectively rotor yarn is the extreme example we cannot normally measure measuring twist in rotor span yarn is difficult, but we can take example of scoured cotton yarn. In scoured cotton yarn the thing what it happens the during scouring the fibers get little bit distorted in the structure and the the whatever the wax material this materials comes out from the fiber surface and fiber to fiber friction increases and five there may be some clustering occur. So, fiber gets stick together and if we try to use this method of untwisting twisting that proper extension of proper removal of twist may not be there zero twist condition may not be there because there of the some entanglement some clustering of fibers. So, this may give some wrong result when we use some processed yarn this is only this will give correct result when we give we measure the fibers which are easily separable. Okay. Now, this problem is there there are many yarns not only this like woolen yarn woolen some processed yarn. So, fibers sometimes gets actually they have uh, some have stick together or they have some high friction some clustering takes place. So, for this type of yarn we cannot use a untwist twist method, but there is another method which is known as multiple untwist twist method where the errors at different stages 
get actually even out. So, that multiple twist twist method in the earlier method of untwist twist the number of turns to return to return the yarn to its original length is not the same as the number of turns to take the twist out. So, that is a possible mainly for different types of yarn, but even for raw cotton yarn also this type of errors takes place. So, it has been observed that a number of turns are different that is due to the reversal of the twist. So, this is this actually generates some error in the reading. In span yarn the distortion becomes permanently set into the fiber. So, sometime it ha what happened? So, in cotton yarn if we actually set the twist by steaming or some other treatment due to twist setting not only cotton yarn, but for say synthetic yarn we normally set twist. So, the fibers get actually permanently permanently uh, set in the distorted condition and untwisting becomes actually problem and the elongation due to untwisting and retwisting contraction due to retwisting it is not same it actually adds some error. This is particularly a problem in yarn made of wool fiber. So, that in case of wool fiber we cannot use earlier method. In this method the yarn is untwisted and retwisted back to its original length as in the normal test and the number of turn A is noted. So, that is done just like earlier test and this twist is number of turns is noted. This is untwisted expected 0 twisted and then again we are continuing to retwist this is A. Okay. Now, after that the value A contains an unknown error D this is the D which is unknown we do not know the error value unknown error without the counter being zeroed we are not zeroing the counter the direction of turn is reversed. So, we have reached to the extreme point then we are reversing it again the and the yarn untwisted and twisted back to its original length again. Okay. So, this again we are doing the same process okay, untwisting and twisting back again and it is adding another error d 2. So, if it adds d 1 d 2 it has become b, b is the error. Okay. Now, we will repeat the same process again third time this is to bring back the yarn to its original condition. However, owing to the errors the counter will show a small number of turns instead. So, after reaching there so counter will not show 0 it will show some value okay, the which is actually error and this reading is taken as B okay, which is the uh, due to the errors D 1 and D 2 okay, ideally B should be 0. So, that is why so, this error is there and then by untwisting and retwisting a third time the counter reading is C that we have reached obtaining which contains the errors D 1 and D 2 and D 3. So, C has reached. So, the formula which gives the A minus 2 B plus C equal to 4 x where x is the number of turns in the length of the yarn total length of the yarn what is the number of turns. The method relies on the error d 1 d 2 and d 3 becoming progressively smaller. So, that it uh, d 1 is larger then d 2 is smaller it will become smaller. So, that the 
remaining errors in the above equation is the difference between d 2 and d 3 which can be ignored. So, that uh, that is ignorable. So, in this way we can test the yarn where the just to actually eliminate any error due to the fiber set set of the yarn. Okay. Another test is uh, which is automatic test uh, twist tester this is simple like other techniques just automatic this uh, method depends on the untwisting twisting principle and as it cannot determine the fiber straightening automatically. So, uh, it is it's only earlier method is uh, manual this is automatic method. Now, twist in the plied yarn. Okay. So, in ply yarn measurement of twist is very simple we use simple counter to untwist the uh, ply and we can use the pin just to uh, when it is passing through then it is a we can count the number of twist, but the concept of plying is little bit tricky. Okay. In plied yarn first there is twist in the individual yarn and making of the ply and the second secondly there is a twist in that holds the individual ply together. Now, here it is that this is individual yarn individual yarn okay. this is seven z twisted. Now, we are plying this to yarn to form say two ply yarn. Now, where if we ply this yarn in s direction this will be called as s over z and once we impart twist in s direction suppose in z, z direction the twist is say twist per unit length is say 20. Okay. In s direction when when we start twisting in the s direction so per twist per one twist there will be a reduction of twist in single yarn. So, ideally if we apply 20 twist in two ply two ply twist 20 in s direction then what will happen ideally the fibers in the individual yarn will look like this this is two ply yarn what does it show the fibers are parallel it should be ideally parallel that means one twist in other direction in plying will actually reduce one twist in the single direction. So, normally we do not go up to this point in normal application we use typically around say 70 percent of the single yarn twist. So, if it is 20 twist per inch so we impart say 14 twist per inch. So, that we get the proper feel proper material okay. one can always get this value. So, by controlling by adjusting ply twist we can control the characteristics of the yarn. Okay. In ply yarn firstly there is a twist in the individual strand making of the ply 
and secondly the twist in the two ply condi ply condition which holds the strand together. Okay. If the twist in the single strand is required to measure be measured now how to measure the twist now here in the single strand ideally if it is 20 twist and 2 ply if we impart 14 twist. So, in 2 ply it is become 14 twist, but single ply the twist is here it is a say 6 twist 20 minus 14 6 twist per inch. This 6 twist per inch is there, but if we want to measure the twist in the single yarn here how do we measure. So, this 6 will not be there again, again if we untwist once we untwist then for every twist untwist one twist will be added again to the sink because we will be untwisting in the again in the z direction. One, the two ply yarn once we try to untwist, so it will apply, so it will keep on adding the twist in the single thread, and once this plied yarn becomes parallel, so there, uh, when there is no twist, then we can take out the strand and holding, and then we test the individual yarn twist again. So here although untwisting it is taking place, but once we are trying to take out the yarn individual yarn again we are imparting the same twist. Okay. So, if the twist in the single strand is required, required the yarn can be analyzed by first removing the folding twist then cutting out the individual yarn leaving the one strand whose twist is to be measured okay. that strand we can twist. Now, there are two types of twists are there one is just reverse order twist which is more common in nature like S over Z or Z over S because here if we have say S over Z or Z over S the advantage is that the individual yarn twist gets reduced. So, yarn becomes balanced balanced means that there will not be any residual torque present in the yarn, but for some special application what we do z and z then we apply z twist again on this yarn. If we apply z twist again in two ply in two ply condition in that case what we will get we will keep at suppose two ply condition what we will we are applying say 10 twist per inch. So, what will happen the single thread single strand will have very high twist of 20 this 20 plus 10 of single. So, 30 twist per inch will be there in single strand, but in the say in double strand it there will be 10 TPI. So, this will give a yarn of very special characteristics single yarn has got very high twist this will start having some crepe effect some crepe effect and this will give us a special effect in a fabric and there are various applications where we use this type of effect in the yarn because the appl application of very high twist in single thread sometimes creates problem in one stage suppose we want to create uh, impart a twist 30 TPI or 40 TPI in ring frame the impact is that first is that its productivity of ring frame will go down drastically and also the yarn will have so snarling tendency we cannot actually process the yarn in 
next process in winding or twisting it is not possible. So, the technique is that if we want to have a crepe like effect we and in two ply we must go for this technique z over z or s over s that is that is the normal technique used in the industry to get different effect. We do not apply twist in fast go in ring frame okay, or in spinning process because of the two reasons one is productivity another is handling the yarn in uh, high it will be highly twist lively. Okay. So, we will stop here we have completed the twist uh, measurement section and in next class we will start a new topic till then thank you.